Okay, in this video, we're going to review the Hilltopper Sprinter model of the e-bike conversion kit. Uh, I've been thinking about uh, getting an e-bike for quite some time now. About two years ago, my son-in-law in Connecticut uh, modified his bike to an e-bike and got me interested in it. The problem I have is I have a vintage Schwinn, vintage uh, circa 1965, uh, tandem bike. And uh, it makes it a little more unique uh, to install an e-bike kit. And uh, I did a lot of thinking on it and uh, I decided the best way to go would be to modify the front wheel rather than the back wheel. Uh, the reason being the back wheel of the uh, tandem bike uh, is a little unique. It's a 10 speed bike uh, in that it has the five sprockets in the back uh, and uh, it also has the Bendix coaster uh, which allows you to uh, free wheel uh, when you're not pedaling. Uh, however, usually with a coaster brake, uh, you pedal backwards uh, to put the brake on. But in this case, because it's a tandem bike, uh, they have a unique braking system here. It's, uh, it's a shoe brake, but it's activated by a hand lever. Uh, I suppose that's so that the driver has uh, control uh, and you don't have one person trying to pedal forward while the other one's trying to pedal backwards to put the brake on. So that kind of makes sense. But at any rate, uh, it does make it a little more complicated to try to change over that back end to an electric bike. So I decided a front wheel uh, device would be best. Um, about a year ago, February, I... Uh, found a clip bike online uh, which was a new device that basically is self-contained and mounts on the front wheel fork and uh, it has a rubber drive a battery and everything is all self-contained uh, and it just drives the front wheel uh, so it's supposed to easily convert any bike to an e-bike uh, and it was only four hundred dollars which was a, a factor also uh, so they were developing this product and they weren't going to be immediately available so, and I knew that going in. Uh, so I put a $50 deposit down and waited and waited and waited. They kept me informed and they were having problems uh, getting chips for the electronics and whatnot. There was always some excuse why I didn't get it. Um, so I'm not going to do a few re uh, full review on the clip bike. Uh, you can watch that and the outcome of that story in another video that I have online. If you're considering getting a clip bike device, I would strongly recommend you look at my video first because uh, that process did not go well. At any rate, I ended up reviewing the uh, Hilltopper. And that seemed to fit my needs, even though it was a little more money. I think I paid uh, $549 for this model delivered. And uh, interesting enough, it comes from a company in Seattle, Washington called Hilltopper. And Seattle is where I actually got this vintage bike at the local Goodwill store there. Uh, that was probably about 15 years ago. And. Uh, uh, I live in Oregon, uh, in Grants Pass, Oregon, and it was pretty hilly, so we didn't get as much use out of the bike as I would have liked. Uh, we did take it on a few camping trips uh, up at the, uh, Diamond Lake, uh, up in the mountains and everything, because it had some bike trails, and it was nice. But for the most part, it's been sitting in my shed <laughs> um, for quite a few years, uh, unused, which was a shame because it's, it's really a nice bike. And my wife passed away uh, after 50 years of marriage in 2016. And I met another woman who owns a park bottle here in Casa Grande, Arizona. I'll give you a little look at the RV park where we come. We come here in November through April and uh, it's a beautiful park. It's a mixture of uh, RVs and park models, which are permanent homes. And 
If you look over here, that tall building, beautiful sunsets over that building, that's the Lay's Potato Chip Factory. <laughs> So on, if the wind is blowing right, mmm, potato chips. <laughs> At any rate, uh, as you can see, the weather here, and, and this is January, by the way, mid-January, and uh, the weather is just beautiful, so it's ideal for bicycling. Uh, a lot of people here have bicycles. Uh, it's at over 50 parks, so everybody's, you know, like I am, older. Uh, both me and my uh, new love are in our 80s, okay? And, uh, but we ride the bike and we have a great time. There's probably maybe six or seven miles of roads within the park and uh, speed limit is 15 miles an hour, so we're not looking to break any speed laws, but uh, we have a good time. And, and uh, I just felt that adding the e-bike option would extend our rides a little bit and uh, just make it more enjoyable. There are a few slight grades within the park where we can feel the burn going uphill. <laughs> so basically that's why I'm going to be installing this kit on the bike. Um, and I'm going to go over, I'm not going to show you the actual installation because that's going to vary per bike. Uh, however, a lot of it is uh, uh, similar, and uh, I want to make a couple of changes to uh, what they have here and explain what I'm doing and, and, and why, uh, and plus give you a review of Hilltopper and my experience with the company itself, as well as placing the order and getting the order, and then as after I've installed it, any issues or anything that I've had uh, putting it in. So. Uh, first of all, uh, I discovered the product online uh, while searching for an e-bike solution, uh, and it was a Saturday, and they had an 800 number, I believe, or Seattle number, and it said call for further information. So I called, and of course it went to voicemail. It was Saturday, and that, I understand that, you know, not everybody works on a weekend. And so they said they would return the call. So, well, Monday comes and didn't get a call. So later in the day, I did give them a call and immediately it went to voicemail again. Uh, and so I figured, well, maybe the next day they'll call. Tuesday comes, no call. Uh, I tried calling again, it goes to voicemail. Uh, in reading online, uh, other people's reviews, uh, they had the same problem getting a hold of the company uh, on the telephone was difficult, if not impossible. Uh, I sent them an email and I did get a response to the email in that they said uh, because of COVID, uh, they have a reduced staff and it takes them longer to get back to you, but they will get back to you. Uh, so I, I'm because of my bad experience with Quick Clip Bike, uh, I'm must say I'm a little impatient, but uh, I do like, I did have some questions since I have a sort of a unique application to use their product that I wanted answered. But I did my research. I watched a bunch of uh, other YouTube videos about installing it and using it and whatnot. And they were quite helpful. Um, so I, I took a chance. I, I placed an order on last Thursday. And uh, today is Tuesday, by the way. Uh, I placed an order last Thursday uh, and ordered it. Uh, it was uh, 400 and, let's see, 559, $49, $549, it was $50 off. So a $600 unit, I say 50 bucks. Uh, I also signed up for a newsletter and after I placed the order, I get a, a newsletter with a 10% 10, 10 off coupon. So that would have been nice if I had that before the order, but I didn't. However, um, in the order, it gave you a place to write comments. So I made a little comment about their a lack of customer service and being able to get a hold of them. And immediately uh, after placing the order, I got a call from their tech department and he did answer all my questions. He assured me that uh, this unit would work on my tandem bike and uh, do as expected to do. 
So we will see at any rate. So that made me feel better uh, getting a call. And uh, so I'm going to review what happened. So, so that was Thursday. I immediately got a, it shipped out the same day, which impressed me. Uh, I got a tracking number, came by UPS, and it, it arrived here in Arizona uh, uh, Monday, yesterday, uh, 5.30 at night, too late to do anything with it, but uh, I did manage to open the box and put the battery on charge because uh, you need to get that charged up. It's a, a lithium ion battery, which is pretty cool. Uh, so uh, that should be very functional. However, I was very impressed with their packaging. So kudos to that. I'll show you how it comes. Basically, it's in a box and then this uh, this here is uh, slides out and you open it up. You open it up and the uh, you got three little boxes. One has the battery, uh, the battery holder and throttle and charger. Uh, and then the wheel itself is kind of in the middle and that holds it in place. So uh, very well designed packaging. It arrived perfectly uh, with no problem. So that pleased me. Uh, it, everything was pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I had downloaded the uh, instructions online first. So I kind of knew what was coming and, and what to do. Basically, you get the wheel, which is, uh, I needed a 27 and a half inch rib, uh, which is what they sent. Uh, however, immediately upon taking it out, and I kind of suspected it from the pictures, it's uh, a little bit more bigger than my original wheel. And I can show you that here. Uh, I mean, don't forget, this is a vintage Schwinn 1965. However, uh, in measuring the rim itself, uh, it appears to be pretty close to the same. So I think what I'm going to do before I mount the wheel is take off the tire that came with it and put on the thin wall tire that uh, is on my bike. The reason being, I just put brand new t tires with heavy duty tubes on this bike because we get uh, certain kind of needles from the plants uh, on the ground here in Arizona. As you can see, there's cactus and palm trees and all kind of weird foliage. <laughs> and and they, these needles tend to stick into the rubber tire uh, and then just enough into the tube to make them go flat. So the fellow at the bike shop here in town uh, recommended these heavy duty tubes and I put them in last year and they made all the difference in the world. So I think before going too far with this installation, I'm going to be changing the tire uh, and tube to the ones that are on the bike now. Plus aesthetically, it will look better uh, not to have that weird tire on the front. Uh, I, I thought about maybe just moving the motor over, but the, all the spokes and everything, it's a whole different uh, hub arrangement. So I think the easiest way would be to just install uh, the tire. And it looks like that wouldn't be too bad a job. So uh, that will be one of my first projects. Um, secondly, uh, the installation of the battery. Now they give you this battery holder right here which is pretty neat thing it even has a key lock now the batteries for these things are not cheap okay uh, when looking online you'll see a lot of kits uh for like 350 400 or something uh, and you say oh that's a good deal but then you get into reading it and it says battery not included yeah that's because the battery is like another 150 bucks um, but uh, anyways this is a lithium ion battery and uh, it basically slips into this little kit now the this has to fit kind of on this bar over here which uh, a lot of a lot of bikes the newer bikes they have bottle holders which there's holes and screws already uh, drilled into the bike. But in fact, you can see that uh, this, well, I'm back again, <laughs> ran out of memory in the phone. So I had to delete a bunch of stuff and make some room. 
but uh, at any rate, um, what we're going to do now is talk about this uh, uh, battery holder device thing. Um, it has to mount over here. Uh, let's see if I can do that. There, stay there. <laughs> okay, it's got a mount with the wires down, downhill like that, and ideally on this bar here, okay? Uh, now there's a couple of cables on here for the derailleur system and, and, the, and the speed system. So uh, I'm not exactly sure how that's gonna work. Um, this is steel. Uh, so uh, normally they, the newer bikes have holes drilled in there with screws for mounting uh, water bottles, etc. Uh, this one doesn't have it. However, as you can see, the uh, uh, the battery thing has uh, all kinds of slotted holes and stuff, so that uh, uh, it'll pretty much accommodate any any screw configuration. So, before I start drilling holes in there, I'm going to do a little research. This is steel, um, so it's pretty strong. Um, I want to see about weakening, if it's going to weaken the frame if I drill holes or anything like that. Probably not, but uh, uh, also I want to make sure that installing this doesn't interfere with those cables there. So I got some uh, planning to do there. So, uh, but at any rate, I have my work cut out for me in the next few days. <laughs> So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pause this video for now and then we're going to continue uh, once I uh, uh, make some of these modifications, uh, change the tire, install the battery holder, etc. Et and I'll, and I'll, also I want to detail in on the front wheel, uh, they make reference to the dropout. Now I had to learn what the heck a dropout is. Um, over here where the axle goes in, there's a little slot where the uh, thing goes in there. That's called the dropout. Uh, and the instructions say it, you need to have 11 millimeters. Okay, well, we don't use millimeters here in this country, but uh, I measured it and it, it's pretty close to 11 millimeters. Uh, and there's something that fits in there. So as I get this apart, and find out we'll have to see they recommend it if it's tight or it doesn't fit you have to file it up file this dropout away i don't like the idea there's not a lot of metal there to begin with i don't like the idea of filing that so i'm going to see if there's a workaround if i have to file anything uh maybe i can file the washer that fits in there but uh, again i will let you know how that works out but uh, I got my work cut out for me in the next few days anyways, and I'll be back to you. So, see you then. Well, it's now about a week later <laughs> from where we left off. And I'd like to bring you up to date on our uh, installation. I now have in a, a vintage Schwinn tandem bike that's been electrified. And I ended up putting on the original equipment that came with it with the exception of the tire uh, and i'll tell you why um, i had to have a learning curve evidently <laughs> about uh, wheels and wheel sizes uh, the original tires for this bike were 27 inch and it did say on their website that they don't have 27 inch so i figured well 27 and a half is only a half inch bigger as should do well <laughs> is more than just a half inch um, it's a huge difference in between a 27 inch tire rim and a 27.5 inch tire rim uh, the actual the 27.5 has a smaller rim and uh, in diameter uh, and so i couldn't just take the old tire and put it on this new bike uh, so, let me show you the difference. Okay, this, these are the, this here was the original uh, tire, 27 inch gum wall tire that was on the bike. And this is the tire 
that came with the uh, hilltopper. And you can see there's a huge difference in the width of it. And although they're both pretty much the same, the other is just about a half an inch taller. Uh, but you can see the profile. Let me see if I can lay it down here for you. The profile, the right this part uh, is, is quite a different. So I, there's no way you can mount the 27 inch tire onto the 27 and a half inch rim. It just doesn't work. So uh, the problem I was running into was that over here with the original tire, it was too wide and it was rubbing on the inside of the fork. So I needed to get a narrower one. Now, they really don't tell you uh, the size of the tire on their website, uh, but this tire is actually a 1.95 width. Uh, I guess that's, uh, uh, yeah, inches. Uh, so that's almost two inches wide, whereas this is an inch and a quarter, which is what it was designed for. So uh, I ended up with a 1.6 inch wide, so three tenths of an inch narrower. And if you put one next to the other, you can see they're almost close. It, it, it is a little bit fatter, but there's still plenty of room in there. However, because of the difference in the rim, where the brakes came, they were, they were up here with the other rim, uh, and now they're down here. So I had a jury rig a little extension, uh, which for now, it's working. Uh, I, uh, I think it'll work better once they wear into this configuration a little bit. Uh, but I'm going to uh, see if I can get uh, a, a new set of calipers. Uh, Shimano uh, braking systems has an extended, extended caliper uh, where this part here is longer. And I think that's what it needs. So I'm going to look into getting uh, that. However, that said, I must say uh, I'm very pleased with the installation. Uh, the motor is much more powerful than I expected it to be. Uh, even with two passengers. Now, this bike, the frame is steel. Uh, so I'm guessing, I don't have a scale, but I'm guessing the bike itself weighs probably 45 pounds, um, uh, maybe a little more now with the battery and stuff. Uh, th here's the installation of the battery. That went on fairly easy. Uh, I had to drill and tap a couple holes. That part was relatively easy. Uh, the throttle is over here, uh, basically here. And uh, so the hardest part was fabricating the brakes to, to work with it. And it's very important that you have front brakes. Uh, I can tell you that. And um, getting the tire uh, to fit this particular bike. I think if you were converting an existing 17.5 uh, inch tire uh, bike, uh, it would be easy swap, easy schmeasy, uh, easy to put on and take off. Uh, however, I don't ever do anything the easy way. <laughs> so uh, th this was a little more difficult. However, that said, uh, I was getting to the weight. Uh, the bike weighs about 45 pounds. I weigh roughly 200 pounds. Uh, my significant other, probably 120 pounds. So what is that? Two, 320, 365, uh, 365 pounds of, of uh, weight uh, on this bike. We were able to start from a standing stop uh, without pedaling, and it got up to probably 15, 16 miles an hour, even with two of us on there. And it easily handled the slight grades here in the park um, without any trouble at all. I, I was amazed at the power that this little uh, bike has. Uh, so I, I, all in all, it did everything it exceeded my expectations. So I couldn't be more pleased. 
Um, so I give it kudos. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yes, I'll let you know uh, how I make out with the, uh, the Shimano um, retro kit, if, if I can find one. That uh, uh, They don't make a lot of caliper brakes anymore because everybody's going to disc brakes, but uh, I think the Shimano still has a line of caliper brakes. So I'm going to look into that maybe on eBay or something and, and see if I can find what I need. And uh, I may post that as an addendum to this video. But for now, uh, I have an electric vintage Schwinn tandem bike and I'm very happy with it. Okay, this is my significant other, Kathy. And she and I are going to go for a ride on our new electric tandem bicycle, vintage Schwinn 1965, that we have electrified. Um, I haven't figured out how to steer and run the brakes and the motor and hold the camera and all that at the same time. So I'm going to turn the camera over to her and then uh, she's going to hold it over my shoulder and we'll give you uh, uh, a little... Uh, preview of what it's like to be on a tandem bike that's electrified so i'm just gonna go i have to get on the bike and then give her the camera okay can you hold that yes okay now you gotta hold it until i get on okay It's a beautiful day for a ride, too. Look, I'm giving you a picture of the park here. Okay, I'm going to hand the camera to her. She's going to hold it over my shoulder as we drive. Okay, are you ready, my dear? Yes. Okay, here we go. I just used the pedals with the uh, motor to get started. Now we're just pedaling. So we're going along probably around six or seven miles an hour. Earlier, I tested the bike alone uh, and I had it up to 19 miles an hour. That seems to be the top speed, which is uh, technically speeding in the park because in the park it's 15 miles an hour. But I'm gonna engage the motor right now to just show you what this little thing can do. Now this is what I worked on the brakes and they're working much better, which is a good thing. got the derailers squared away and that seems to be working much better so that's a good thing. Let's see if the gate's open. Nope, the gate's not open. I'm going to have to stop and press the button. Welcome. <laughs> I'm taking your picture. Hi. <laughs> okay, this is the other side of the park. Ooh, that wind. Yeah, a little headwind there. We'll give it a good catch. Shine the camera, they're putting in some new park. 
bottles over here. You can see how they, they dig out a hole for them. Park them in the hole. Now on the other side of this corner, we have one more corner. There's a slight grade. And one of the reasons I bought this is because we were having trouble Make your legs ache. Okay, you know, you feel the burn. We're going to pedal a little bit. Kathy says she wants some exercise, so we're going to pedal. I can already feel the burn. You know when you're sick of the burn. No, feels good. Feels good, okay. Maybe I better get the water tower in here. up the hill quite easily. My arm hurts. My right shoulder hurts. I hope that's well. Oh, nice quiet section. Okay, I'm yeah. Gonna... I'm going to stop over here at the stop side and then uh, we'll end this video. That way we can enjoy the rest of our ride without having to take pictures. Oh. There. I don't know how it okay. turned out. Honey. Okay. Well, we'll see you back at the editing board.